What's up everyone? It's Phoenix of Being Guys. Another video. Today we are going to be reviewing Young Justice Outsiders. Episodes 1 to 3. So, we're going to start off with the just overall view review so that you guys can, who are looking forward to a, a simple review that without spoilers can hear it and then we'll move on to the spoilers. Uh, for the overall review, I thought that this season started out with the bang. It's a, it's a lot of setup, but it's a lot uh, of but there's also a lot of things that happen that are very interesting and still compelling to watch. It's not in in many ways it is kind of a drive by. You know, we're we're meeting all these characters and we're getting the team together and we're setting up the plot and we're doing this and that. So that's what the first three episodes are mainly focused on but that's not to say that they aren't worth watching because they very much are and it's very much a way to start off the season um you're going i definitely think that you guys are going to be very excited to see the characters returning as there's been some changes but changes for the better i think um and there's been new, you know, obviously new members added, as we knew from the poster that was published a while ago, uh, with the lineup of people to expect. Um, there's still some people missing, but I assume that they're going to be added as we go along. Um, now, uh, I think it's important to realize that all of this is set up for the whole thing. And there's a total of 26 episodes, so I'm pretty sure the first three episodes are going to be, you know, it, 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 it kind of teases what we can expect, but it doesn't give anything away, and it doesn't really uh, disappoint either. You know, it teases enough, but not the whole thing, and I think that's a very good way to approach it, because you don't want to give the whole plot away in one swing. While uh, I do think some plot points were kind of predictable, but maybe that was intentional. I mean, I think everything, if, I think a good plot line should be kind of predictable, kind of. Like, it should make sense, and I think that's what exact, that's exactly what they did. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily, you know, the most surprising reveal, but it was also practical. And I think practical re re reveals are still good reveals. Um... And there were some kind of there are there were points where it kind of tried to, you know, veer you off the course and uh, throw surprises at you, but it it was still very pleasant to watch. Um, there was there was a little bit um, of a lower quality that I noticed with the animation side, but that's I'm pretty sure that's only due to the limited budget that they have since they are a you know they are redeeming themselves and they are returning from the dead it's a little bit you know they start off with a lower budget than they started out with in in the beginning because they want to make sure that this actually is something that people want to watch and so they don't have as big as a budget but I am sure that the quality of animation is still uh, going to be good and it's going to probably improve over time especially as the viewers uh, come in and you know show the DC that this is people this is what people want to see and once that's the once that happens I'm sure the budget will increase and also we'll see higher quality animation and maybe even a season Four, which I think we definitely should get. I definitely want to see this, this show get the seasons that it deserves and the spotlight that it deserves alongside Titans and the upcoming new shows that are that are coming to the DC platform. Now that is pretty much all of the spoiler the non-spoiler review that I can give you without giving anything away. So if you have not seen the first three episodes do not watch this. Do not watch this if you have not seen the first three episodes. Because I will be giving everything away and nothing will be spared. So if you don't want to be spoiled, get out of here. Uh, come back after you've watched all three episodes and we can begin. 
Oh, also I should add, I believe that if you don't have the DC Universe uh, streaming platform, since that is where this is premiering, um, I believe for other countries it's on Netflix. It should be on Netflix. Um, I'm pretty sure. That's what they usually do for this type of thing. Uh, anyways. Let's, uh, let's get into this. So, we open the... We opened the season with a very interesting dilemma. The Batman believes that the Justice League has outlived its service and therefore he initiated a protocol basically with the Bat family and some other leaguers uh, to move away from the Justice League, to retire from the Justice League and essentially start a new protocol, which I assume would be Protocol Outsiders. I don't know. Um, but there's a new thing that's happening, and, you know, he... Batman being Batman, you know, said he, he's not going to, going to, you know, do this. And I think this is very much intentional uh, as a callback to Civil War, because it is very much a Civil War thing. Um... So I think that's kind of interesting how they did that, and they, I'm pretty sure that that was inspired by Civil War. It's sort of the the Accords in a way. It's the same. It's the same sort of thing that's happening. So a bunch of leaguers immediately disbanded from the Justice League and are no longer associated with the Justice League. But of course, it's Batman, so I'm sure there's some sort of plot going on with that. Um, I'm not. I'm pretty sure by the, probably, I would suspect by the end of the season, you might see the leaguers return and in order to set up season four. I believe that's going to have to be a thing anyways. But this, this dilemma is very interesting because it, it, it brings a new sort of light to, to these characters and, and it, 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 it emphasizes why young justice is still necessary. Because if the Justice League is around, and all of the Justice League is around, there's not a real need for young Justice, especially since the characters themselves are growing up and becoming members of the League. It kind of defeats the point of young Justice. But since the Justice League is disbanding, and so many disbanded, this, this uh, explains more th why more than ever... Young justice is necessary, and all of these, you know, there's all this, this whole debate about whether or not meta humans um, should be allowed, basically, and these superheroes are being banned from all sorts of places because people don't like vigilantes, and they don't like that the superheroes are acting on their own accords. Uh, so, of course, half of the league stays uh, and complies with the accords, and the other half leaves. Um, basically, the entire Bat family is not going to be a part of this, um, which honestly makes sense. It, it makes sense that uh, Batman would have an entire you know Bat family on his side, as well as a few others like uh, Green Arrow and Black Lightning. Well, Black Lightning wasn't part of the plan, but he was still going to leave as a callback to the CW show. Um, now, it's very interesting because it seems that uh, Black Lightning is now part of this, this young justice in a way. Uh, he's not obviously he's obviously not young, but he is still part of this little group that Dick Grayson and uh, Artemis is getting together. Uh, we see... Uh, first looks at uh, the new the new characters as well, like um, Halo. I think is her name. Halo girl is her name, uh, which is she has a very interesting and confusing power set. Um, I think her scenes with with Artemis are very funny, uh, especially when she <laughs> when Artemis doesn't really understand her and. Uh, I think it is, it is very comedic in that sense, and it it, it reminded me of the lightheartedness that the uh, the the first season had and the second season had. I think we can definitely expect the you know the, the the same type of humor, just in a darker setting. I think that's definitely absolutely necessarily necessary to have, as it shows matureness. You know, all these characters have essentially changed and grown up, I and mean, some people seem to have a problem with that, but. 
I think it's a very good way to display character. It makes sense that Artemis is no longer, you know, kind of bratty and, and um, self-absorbed. You know, she's now very mature and she, you know, you know she's changed along with all the other characters. Um, like, um, Megan has changed and now they're, Superboy and Megan are engaged. You know, Superboy is no longer this, you know, Hulk character, basically. He's now more in control of his feelings and his abilities. And I think that's a really good thing. Because if, you know, seven years have passed, you know, since season one. So if none of them has ever, have ever changed, it would be kind of weird and confusing. And, I mean, they went from teenagers to full-grown adults. Of course they're going to change in character. Um... I'm not sure why people have a problem with that. I mean, I guess it's not the same characters that they know and love, but it's still the characters that they know and love. Just new and improved and matured. Uh, there shouldn't really be an issue with that. Especially since we're getting to know new characters as they come in. You know, we saw Arrowette for, for a hot second. We saw Beast Boy, who acts who acts more like, you know, Beast Boy from Teen Titans, which is kind of interesting, an interesting twist. I mean, his look looks like he was he's from Teen Titans now. He has his full suit, and he's, it's interesting how he's from essentially Star Trek. I mean, I think it's called Space Trek, but it's literally, it's, it's literally Star Trek, and that's kind of funny. Um... Which, which leads me to believe that we might actually see other Teen Titans characters. Because initially the reason why we didn't see Teen Titans characters is because it was on... Uh, uh, the Teen Titans was still going at that time, I, I think, anyways. Um, so we didn't get to see the Teen Titan characters. And then Teen Titans Go came, and we still couldn't see the characters as much. But now that... Uh, well, Teen Titans Go is still going, but it's on a different network, so to speak. They have different rights to the characters. They can easily pull in Starfire, Cyborg, Raven. They can easily put those characters in. And I do believe that Raven would be a perfect fit for these Young Justice outsiders because, you know, her character is very much an outsider. So to have her join in with Beast Boy and, you know, have also... Even Starfire join in. I think that would be a really cool idea. Because they did say... They did hint towards the Titans being a thing. They did hint towards... was Barbara... Barbara Gordon telling, you know, Dick about... You know, the Titans or whatever. She, she name-dropped it. So it means that they exist. So that very... That means that they can easily have, like, cameos. Even if it's just one episode... They can easily show off the characters with Raven, Starfire, and the other Titans. Even Terra, you know, have Terra join in. And Donna, even. Please, have Donna Choi. I actually thought at first that Wonder Woman was Donna Choi because of the way... Um, just because of the way that she... I think she has a different voice actress. So it kind of... I kind of thought that it was Donna Choi at, some, at, a, at a moment... But it's definitely not. It's definitely in Diana. Now, Troya, the ambassador, I think that could very well be Donna Troy. Unless, cause it, unless it's Diana and her identity is now Troya, that wouldn't make any sense. What would make sense is, is if Donna Troy was Troya and she was the ambassador of Themyscira. I think that would be actually very interesting. A very interesting way of implementing Donna Troy without necessarily implementing Donna Troy. And I really hope we do see Donna Troy because I love Donna Troy and she gets so underused. Like she only just got her first appearance ever in a series and that was with Teen Tit or with Titans. So I think if we have a more, you know, Donna Troy, I think I would absolutely love that. Um so I know Cassidy is a thing, and Cassidy is great and all, or whatever her name is, Cassie. Uh, but I really do prefer Donna Troy. 
Um, and I think having both of them together would be very interesting as well, because they definitely exist, they can coexist with each other, as they're two very different characters in the comics, at least. Um, <clears throat> I do like the hints towards Apocalypse, you know, we keep seeing these boom tubes and these father boxes and these parademons, and we keep seeing hints that Apocalypse is here. It is coming. I don't think it's going to be happen right away. We're going to start with Earth, as the intro says. We're going to start with Earth for, I believe, like the first 13 episodes. And then the last 13 episodes, we're going to be probably on Apocalypse, or at least going back and forth between Earth and Apocalypse. And we're going to be delving in to the war against Darkseid. And having Darkseid in there would be amazing. Because we saw him at the end of season two, and then the, ca the show got canceled, so we never got that resolution, so having that resolution is definitely important. Now, they keep hinting towards Wally West, you know, with the puppy and the, and the uh, plushie, you know, Wally West plushie, and then they also, you know, Artemis looking at his photo with her, and I do believe that Wally West will return. I believe they will have him return at some point, but obviously he's been gone for a, a hot second. And I think we're going to have in some ways what is kind of a crisis. Not really a crisis, but kind of a crisis. And then Wally's going to return. And then we're going to have a whole party with everyone attacking and going to war with Darkseid. Now when they do go to Apocalypse, I really hope that we get to see Granny Goodness and the Furies. And all of that goodness, Callback, and even Steppenwolf can join in with that fight. And I do think if we're going to have an amazing finale, we need not only Darkseid, but we need Apocalypse. I would love to see Big Barda and Scott Free get their cameos as well as we delve into Apocalypse. Get Orion in there. Get um, Highfather. Get Highfather in there. Get um, whatever his name is. Uh, I forget his name. But, you know, get all of these cameos in there, and I think that's going to be a, a really amazing thing. And we could definitely get a season four. Um, overall, I really, I really did enjoy the characters. I enjoyed meeting, you know, these new characters like Halo Girl and some of the others like uh, Br Brion. I don't know if he has an official hero name, but his, his name is Brion. And he has Geo Powers. Which could hint towards Terra. Now, I think, because there is a Princess Tara, or whatever his name is, her name is, that disappeared. And I do believe that she is supposed to be Terra from, you know, from Teen Titans. So she has Geo powers, and that would make sense because she's been kidnapped and probably, you know, the metagene or whatever it's called has been activated and she becomes Terra. Now we didn't see um, Ravenger. We did not see Ravenger yet, but I'm sure she's coming. Um, who else is supposed to be here that we didn't see? Uh, we saw Black Lightning. We saw Arrowette. We saw Batwoman. We saw Batgirl. Well, kind of Batgirl. Yeah, we saw Batgirl. Now I am really interested to see if they will do the killing joke. Because obviously at some point Batgirl becomes Oracle. Now they don't necessarily have to do that right away of course. But they could very well do it at some point. Maybe a season 4 thing that they could think about doing. Turning her into Oracle and having... Not necessarily doing an episode of the killing joke. But just have like a you know a time jump and she's Oracle now and there's hints towards you know Joker being behind all this. I think that would be very interesting. I think having an Injustice League or a young Injustice League would be very interesting for season four. You know we go from Dark Side to a young Injustice League. I think that would be kind of cool. You know we have the Injustice League of course and then we have the young Injustice League, and then we have the Justice League, and then we have the young Justice League. I think that would be kind of cool, and yes, kind of confusing at the same time. Um, but yeah, we got a glimpse of Arrowette. Uh, we got a glimpse of this new Rory uh, 
Speedy, basically, which, or, or Red Arrow, which is kind of interesting. He looks very retired, but I think that's to be expected. He goes by Will now? I don't know why that's a thing. <laughs> um... I guess that's his real name because you know he's no longer the clone. He's the real person, and he goes by Will. I guess uh, I don't remember that being a thing, but that's okay. Um, I liked seeing you know Beast Boy and seeing all of these you know fresh cameos, and I liked seeing the characters and how they change. Now I did realize um, with Dick Grayson and. And, and the Superboy being unmasked. They look identical. They look identical with their little... When they're wearing their masks, they look identical. They look the same thing. It's like they copied and pasted their characters. I, at first, when I saw Dick Grayson, I thought that he was Superboy. Because they both had blue eyes, and they both had black hair, and they both have that same structure. It's actually really confusing because it looks like both it looks like they're the same person so i thought that nightwing's voice actor was voicing superboy and i was confused for a second and then i realized that no it's actually dick grayson it's not that they switch voice actors it's that it's it's the voice actors actually match the characters it's just really confusing because they, because they look identical like i know superboy is supposed to be you know, Superman's clone, but he really looks like Dick Grayson's clone. <laughs> like, doesn't they, don't they actually, they look the same. They do. It's really confusing. Um, but I do like the new outfits. I like that they have to just go sort of undercover so they're not wearing their actual, you know, costumes. And I do enjoy where this season looks to be heading. Uh, can't wait to meet these new people. Uh, with, you know, we already met Brianna, Brion, I mean, sorry, Brion, we met Black Lightning, we, we've already obviously met Tigress, uh, we still have, with Katana, I mean, she, we, we met her, but she, she didn't really, you know, do anything, um, and then we also had Metamorphosis, that's, I think is coming, Metamorpho, or whatever his name is, um, he's also coming, we also saw, yeah, like I said, we saw Arouette, we saw um, Black Lightning and Static Shock. I think Static Shock is going to be uh, joining us as well. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, assume, I assume so anyways. I mean, yeah, I mean, that was, I think that was supposed to be Static Shock that we saw. Um, I'm just looking at the poster. Yeah, we didn't see Ravender. But I'm sure we'll see her. We saw Tim Drake, uh, obviously. And, yeah. So, anyways, I thought, it was a I thought it was a very good way to start off the season. Uh, to start off, you know, it's, it's really setting up this interesting concept that I don't think we've really seen before. Um, but, obviously, it will get resolved at some point. Oh yeah, we also didn't see Spoiler. We, we haven't seen Spoiler yet. Uh, at least I don't think we did. So I think we're missing Ravenger and Spoiler. And then we're probably missing a couple others, but I definitely think it's going to be a really good season. And I'm looking forward to it. I like that they're releasing them three episodes at a time, or at least right now they are. Um, I don't know if they're going to keep doing that the entire season. If they do, I think that would be really amazing. Because you can kind of binge watch the episodes if they do that. And that's a, that's a really good thing for numbers. And just to get people talking as well. Um, you know, they might not do that the entire time. But uh, we definitely will be able to see um, these episodes unfold. Anyway, so that's kind of all I have to say about the season so far. Like I said, I do enjoy the, seeing these characters now grown up. You know, Aqualad became Aquaman because I think Aquaman uh, stepped down from the throne essentially. And I think Superboy is on his way to becoming Superman essentially. Because like he said, you know, Superman is out of orbit. 
And so he's going to have to step up. And I think that's going to be very interesting as well. To wear him, to see him actually wear a super suit would be very interesting. You know? Uh, it's not really Superboy style, of course. But I think it would be kind of interesting to see him wearing the S. The, the actual suit. Uh, or his version of the suit. Maybe we could see a black version of the suit. Because he does like black and red. I think a black and red version of the super suit of the Superman suit would be very interesting on uh, Connor. Of course, no capes for him because he doesn't like capes and he doesn't like tights either. So maybe not that necessarily. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. And I hope you guys enjoy Young Justice Season 3 as we finally have the season that we've been waiting for. Anyways... Leave a like if you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. And peace out, guys. It's been a blast.